Louisville twice. The first time they lost handily, but they did not have JoJo Lacey available. They had her in the second game. JoJo has the ball, and they only lost by two. They led for most of that game in Chestnut Hill. Yeah, they forced 24 Louisville Cardinal turnovers. Only converted 18 points off of those turnovers, but this is a team in Boston College that is playing their best basketball of the season. Shot by Todd. Misses, but... Wagner, Dontavia Wagner, who made it to the all-defensive team, got the rebound. Todd again. Got it! Keep shooting it, Tiana Todd! Hit five of six threes, also a career high yesterday, and that win over Clemson. You take a look at the starting five. Three grad transfers, Jefferson, McCards, and Harris. Taylor, all of them transfers, and then there's the old standby, Ricky Cochran has been there all four years. When you see the pressure that Boston College presents, forcing Louisville outside the three-point line for most of that shot clock. There's Cochran, puts it up and in. Olivia Cochran. And I think getting Olivia Cochran touches early and often in this ball game is going to be critical for Louisville. There's no one inside for the Eagles that can match her physicality. And we talked about JoJo Lacey, who missed seven games after the loss of her dad and his comeback. Very strong in the last few games. Kayla Ivey runs the point for them. Todd open momentarily and then shot it over Taylor. Wagner there for the rebound, but couldn't get it to go. And Myla Harris, who is just a sophomore, has spent her, both of her years at Louisville. Sid Berry. And couldn't convert that time off turnovers. And as you mentioned, that's going to be really important for Boston College. Jeff Walls in his 17th season at Louisville has taken his team to the championship games a couple of times. And he is good friends with Joanna Burnaby McAbee, or McNamee, pardon me. They have they were co-assistant coaches at Maryland in 2006 when they won the national championship. And Jeff said they visited for about a half an hour before the game today, just talking here in the arena. I, I could see that. Reminiscing. Jefferson gets her first basket. She's a grad transfer from JMU. And this is a Louisville team that you expect to come out playing hard right away as Harris has called for that foul. You know, lost in a convincing way in their late regular season matchup against Notre Dame. But right away, good job of shifting the zone defense, finding the open shooter in the corner, and knocking it down for Kiki Jefferson. Kiki, very important. Jeff Wall says she's got to play with a lot of energy on both sides of the ball. Yeah, and it's been about consistency for Louisville. You know, they, they won six straight games earlier in the season. The, the last seven games of the season, they've been alternating win-loss, win-loss. This is not the most dialed-in defensive team that Jeff Walls has had, so they've had to rely a little bit more on their offense. And it's been a bit up and down. And as we mentioned, three grad transfers in the starting lineup, and he has admitted that it's taken a while first to get used to each other, and then for them to get used to the grind of playing in the ACC. Marissa Russell. Russell gets the basket. Senior out of Ottawa. And you're right, they have not had back-to-back -back wins since the end of January, alternating wins and losses ever since. Cards. Now Jefferson. And Dontavia Wagner shows you her elite defensive work. I mean, Dontavia Wagner sets the tone for this team on the defensive end of the floor. Blocking the shot, she's undersized on the interior, but plays with so much defensive energy and activity. It's a good defensive play by Cochran. Ball stays with BC. Now, Boston College went through a 10 game losing streak, and it. It's as simple as making shots. That's part of it, right? Yeah, it, it's funny, you know. It, 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 you talk to coaches all the time, and, and yes, it's as simple as getting confidence, making shots. This is a team that puts themselves in positions because of their defensive energy and their ability to turn teams over. But if they're not turning teams over, teams are shooting at a pretty high clip. Rebound gets into the hands of Ivy. And it's also a team that was going through a lot. You know, you mentioned JoJo Lacey, the passing of her father, a couple other players on this team, and Tiana Todd, and. Uh, Nene and Ye, who, who have both lost parents, and they just were going through a lot during that time frame. So give 
Coach Mack a ton of credit. She kept this team together. They enjoy each other. They like each other, and they're playing their best basketball. JoJo Lacey gets two. JoJo Lacey. JoJo gets her first bucket. Coach Mack said that JoJo's confidence has really gone up over the last several games. And you have to give BC credit because a lot of teams, and Jeff Walls mentioned this, you lose 10 games in a row, mm -hmm. a lot of people are just going to check out. Yes. And they did not. Harris misses. Lacey gets it over. And then a risky pass is intercepted by Harris. Russell coming out aggressive. It's BC basketball. Jojo Lacey shooting 52% the last two games of the regular season. Here she just finds her way on the interior, stays on balance, shoots a little turnaround jumper. Well, she was in foul trouble yesterday against Clemson, didn't play a lot in the first half and, and couldn't quite get herself into an offensive rhythm. Finished with seven points in that win. Todd, good defense over there by Jada Curry in the game. She's a Cal transfer. Shot clock winding down. Wagner noticed it and went right to that rim. And Casey Berry's been so good. Transfer from Utah. She is a go-to scorer and does a great job in the face-up of attacking the rim. So Berry, who is from Salt Lake, but a freshman year at Utah. Harris sticks with it. Harris. Harris ties it up at nine apiece. Ball for Sidbury. Todd picked up the ball and put it in. Yeah. Sidbury slow getting up, but she's still in the play. Russell trapped. Curry tried to get it inside, and it's taken away by Wagner, who has set a BC single season record for steals this year. A lot of heart, a lot of hustle so far in this game as we take our first time out. Mobile foul number 13 Russell Russell. Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better off with an Ally. When you're great, your game does Yeah, absolutely. These are two coaches who have impacted, you know, this league and the lives of the players, you know, throughout the course of their career and, and have the ultimate respect for one another. Jeff actually said that Joanne, Joanna and her husband Joe are going to be his guests at the Derby this year. Oh, nice. That's, that's a good friend. That is a good friend. <laughs> Boston College with the 11-9 lead over Louisville. That shot. Andrea Very by Daly. Andrea Daly. Her first bucket. She had 13 points and three steals against Clemson. Curry, bothered by Wagner, who already has two steals in this game. She's just a menace on the defensive end and forced another turnover. And how quickly she recovers. Right? She goes to the free throw line to try to get a steal, and then all of a sudden she's on the ball side block. Third turnover for Louisville, and they have uh, been in control of this matchup. Leading 16 to 1, Boston College got its only win back in 1985. That was the first time that they played. So. It's been a while, Boston College and Louisville. Louisville has owned the series certainly since both teams got into the ACC. Shot clock winding down now for Lacey. Puts it up over the outstretched fingertips of Harris. And it finds nothing but air. This Boston College defense. Now the shot clock is winding down for them. Rebound taken down by Daly. Back to 
given a lot of space out there. Spins into the lane and draws a foul. Well, I'm not going to defend Dontavia Wagner at that 15 to 17 feet. They're going to challenge her to score the basketball, but she is so good and does such a good job of getting into defenders and giving herself opportunities at the foul line. Foul by Sydney Taylor. Wagner goes to the line on average over five times per game, but is only a 60% free throw shooter. We see had some trouble at the line yesterday. Wagner though was four for six against Clemson. Her freshman year at NC State. And 0 for 2 on that trip. Istanbulolu is in, number 11 in white. There she is, freshman out of Turkey. She will shoot it from there. Looks like she's towing the line, perhaps, but it's called a three, at least for now. She wasted no time. No, absolutely not. That, this is what she does. She comes in, she can stretch the floor. And her size, her versatility can create problems. Only four for 21 from three on the season. That's 19%. Now hit her fifth one. Wagner left open and makes him pay. And if you're a little boy, you're going to live with that shot from Dontavia Wagner right now. It keeps her off of the offensive glass, keeps her away from the rim, off the free throw line. Well, that's where she can do the most damage. Curry liked that shot for a reason. The Curry's first basket of the game underneath to Daly, and she got hit by Aleph Istanbuloli. Jeff Ball talked to us pregame that we need to make sure we force this defense to shift. And they've done a really good job of doing that. Istanbulu gives you a different look on the perimeter, somebody that you have to check. And here, the ball getting to the ACC logo, which is critical against the zone. And Curry on the backside. Daly at the line after getting fouled. She's only a 68% shooter, as you see, during the regular season. It's one out of two. Ties the, or breaks the tie, now 16 to 15. Taylor, defended out there by Todd. Now the switch. So he puts it up and in. Talked about her in the open and just how crucial she is to this offense. Also, she she's playing harder. Just had to kind of learn that after playing at UMass. He expected his team to come out and play a lot harder today on both ends of the floor. But again, Louisville just really good ball movement. This is a team that only shoots at 32% from the three-point line, four or five so far here today. Angel can give us more. We were talking about Sydney Taylor and how this has been a transition for her at Louisville. And before, Jeff Walls talked about how she was trying to play hero ball. He said now in this rhythm, she just understands what she needs to be for this team. She'll shoot a three, understand how to get others involved. She gets the rebound there. She just does the little things while still playing her game. And that's important. You know, when you've come from a program where you've had to shoulder the heavy load and you've had to do all of the scoring, and you know, as Sydney Taylor did, as Kiki Jefferson did, and you're coming into a, a BCS program and an ACC conference that's deep, and you just have to play your role. Right? You just have to learn how to do. There's no conserving anymore. You don't have to coast. Do all the things well, in addition to just scoring the basketball. And she was first team All-Atlantic 10 last year, led them in threes. Todd turning into a three-point shooter herself this weekend in Greensboro. But it's an adjustment for these players. Jefferson, another one. She went to JMU, and Coach told us that Kiki Jefferson only played against five ranked teams in four years at JMU. Taylor, just three. Whereas in the ACC, that's a whole different story. <laughs> that's, that's two weeks. Yes. <laughs> Waning seconds of the first quarter. Shot clock off. Just getting it off. A desperation shot for BC. 
Seven players have scored for Louisville as they take 20 to 18 lead after the first quarter of play. Eastert, the winner of this game, will advance to play Notre Dame tomorrow morning. Louisville and Notre Dame just capped off their regular seasons in South Bend last Sunday. DC trying to get this upset win. Ivy being pounded out there by Curry. Todd trying to go between her legs, kicked it, was able to recover. Now they need a shot. Daly elevates. Nobody checked Wagner. And don't take your Wagner's activity in. It just makes her really difficult to box out. You know, it sounds simple sometimes to say just put a body on her, but <laughs> she's in constant motion and she's so quick that it makes it difficult. She really covers a lot of ground in very little time. Undersized at six feet, but gets a lot done. Another three, yes! <laughs> Kiki <laughs> Jefferson <laughs> with her second three of the game. I mean, that makes it tough when you're playing against the zone. That is four different players for the Louisville Cardinals that have hit a three right now. So communication, making sure you're getting to shooters is going to be important. Wagner driving in, difficult shot. Nyla Harris comes up with the rebound. Another three. This time Taylor couldn't get it to fall. Second chance. Curry sets things up. Taylor stepped around. Wagner! Super Taylor. Biggest lead of the game for Louisville. They are up five. Left open on the perimeter for three. The shot falls off the rim for Sidbury. But it's Wagner. Dante no surprise, Wagner. right? Dontavia yeah. Wagner involved in the play. She has been terrific on the offensive glass. This for the steal against Harris, who went around her. Ball stays with Louisville. I mean, the Cardinals just doing a great job of moving the basketball taken and making their open shots. Kiki Jefferson for three. And then look, you play the percentages for a certain amount of time, but after they've made so many, they become three-point shooters, runner off the line, and she knocks down the pull-up. Nice move by Harris to spin around the defense. She's got four points. It's almost tougher when you're game planning for a team that you never really know where the scoring has come from. That's so balanced yeah. in the way that Louisville is balanced. That's what is what this team has been all about this year, as you mentioned, the balance scores. They don't have the the stars like they, they did back in the day. They could always count on for a bucket. Nyla Harris, is, her mobility is so good. She's gotten better off the bounce. Great job of attacking the rim. Wagner just picked up her first personal foul. Louisville shooting 52%, including five of nine from three. Wagner with their third steal of the game, takes it. And a little bit too much spin on it. BC not taking advantage of the turnovers like they did yesterday when they had 26 points off turnovers against Clemson. And Jeff Paul says, we cannot telegraph our passes. And that was a telegraph right there, and the Eagles just not able to capitalize. Daly was called for her first foul after the Wagner miss. Curry trying to get around Wagner, put up a wild shot. And Sidbury goes in the post, but as you see, has the ability to handle the ball. Wagner with the drive. Nice, Jefferson found Harris. Really good job of pushing in transition. And Louisville is very selective in terms of when they choose to run and when they don't. That's a great finish by Sidbury. 
Seabury now with six points on the afternoon. Cuts the lead back to five. Jeff Wallace is going to sub in three players at the next opportunity as Harris couldn't handle that pass. Great look in transition. Kiki Jefferson, nice little drop off for Nyla Harris. And Sigberry again, starting on the perimeter, does such a good job of attacking off the bounce with a tough finish. Sidberry, the most prolific scorer in Utah high school history, was a Ute last year and transferred over to BC. Todd finds herself some space. Harris corrals the rebound. Hart's back in the game. Inside, Cochran. Stayed in the lane a little bit too long. Yeah, she's got to go to work when she gets that ball in the interior. I like the idea, give Olivia Cochran a touch inside. There's no Dontavia Wagner on the floor, so take advantage of that on the interior. But she's got to just score it. Yep. So seven turnovers now for Louisville. So far, four points off of the turnovers for BC. That's great D by Nyla Harris. <laughs> Daly missed everything. Here's Ricards, and that's another errant pass. And Jeff Walls is going to take Ricards out and bring Curry. Back in. Wagner back in for Boston College, number 24, second straight day. They're wearing these dark gray uniforms. Worked against Clemson. Popped out by Russell, who has shown some great energy. The Louisville now with a five-point lead. We take a timeout. The ACC's. Introducing our all-star lineup. The North Carolina second round of the ACC tournament, and there are the school. Students here today in some creative ways. What is that, a pom-pom, a shaker? What would you call that pom -pom, thing? Pom-pom, little pom-pom, yeah. So they are here. They're expecting what you heard about 7,000 over the next couple of days. 7,000 students will be here. Sure beats being in class, right? Absolutely does. Awesome, right? Yeah. I don't know. I probably shouldn't say that. I come from a family <laughs> That's educator, true. Uh, yes. so I probably should yeah, say but I mean, as a It's a different kind of learning experience. Yeah, exactly. Right? Life, life skills. Life skills, teamwork. Teamwork, yep. Uh, yes, not Resilience. having to do math you'll never use in yep. your life, things like that. <laughs> the yeah. math is different nowadays. <laughs> the math is different. Yeah, once they started putting letters in math, <laughs> I was gone. <laughs> I was out. Pam <laughs> works stuff white and... Angel Gray joining you. Louisville is hanging on to a 29-24 lead. Second round, first of four games coming your way on the ACC Network. Now Harris just committed her second foul for Louisville. And the Eagles just shooting 37% from the floor, not taking advantage of turnovers. Well, they forced eight turnovers in the ball game. Dontavia Wagner gets two going Dante to the rim. Wagner. They only have four points off of those turnovers. And the difference in Boston College in this three-game win streak that they've had is they've been making shots. You know, sometimes they struggle offensively. They always bring the energy defensively. But you've got to find a way to match buckets. Four steals for Wagner, who was on the ACC All-Defensive team. She is. Getting close to 100 steals on the season. Already has set a new single season record for steals. There she is. We like this matchup. Dontavia Wagner facing up against Olivia Cochran. Sidberry tried to get the reverse layup, but that wouldn't work. Lugo had turnover issues and now they've missed a couple of shots so they've had six straight empty trips they still lead by three Todd 
all the way across court. Nobody is guarding Sidbury. She's got nine points. And Jeff Walls threw his arms up in the air. He told us that how they defend on the perimeter will dictate how far they go, not only in this tournament, but the NCAA tournament as well. And there's no one on Sidbury. This is just good offensive execution. There's a almost an over rotation. I don't feel like Marissa Russell was beat one on one, and it's unnecessary help right there. And then it creates a mismatch on the backside, and Sidbury takes advantage. But that's the other piece of of, of a lot of players that, that that transfer up, right? It's 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 you've conserved on one end of the floor or the other because you've had to do so much for your team. But learning how to defend at a high level and. You know, Jeff Walls is, is honest about this team. We're not the most defensive-minded team that we've had here at Louisville, and he's had some great ones. Yes. That's typically been the identity of his ball club. And taking pride in that, taking pride in individual defense, and as you mentioned, perimeter defense, that will tell the story in how deep of a run in this tournament and in the NCAA tournament that Louisville can make. BC foul, number 14, Todd, her first. Todd just foul. picked up her first foul for Boston College, and he had talked about Nyla Harris and Olivia Cochran being elite defenders on this team, but he, they have oftentimes had to go out on the perimeter to help on defense, and that's not what he wants. No, he wants individual accountability to contain in the basketball. Now, look, there are some exceptional athletes when it comes to guarding one-on-one -on -one that, that are nearly impossible to guard. But on the regular, he wants more accountability on the perimeter defensively. Cochran just broke a 7-0 BC run. Gets them both. And there you see a 23 net. Charlie Cream right now has him as a sixth seed, which means they would not host in the first and second round. Three wins against the net, top 25. You know, oh, and the team, and, and, and you mentioned this on a broadcast that you had towards the end of the season, an offensive foul. But this was a team that, that controlled their own destiny at one point for having the double bye here in the ACC tournament, potentially hosting in the NCAA tournament. And the inconsistency throughout the, the month of February really hurt them in terms of seeding. The last 10 games, they have alternated wins and losses. And, and you're right, they had a chance. Lost to Notre Dame. Notre Dame had to win out in their last two games to get the fourth seed in this tournament, and they did just that. And the winner of this game gets the Irish tomorrow. Russell shuffled her feet. They had the, the tough loss on the road at Syracuse, that controversial call, yes. one point loss, and which would have been another great net win at that point. You know, certainly playing Virginia Tech at home, a tough loss there. You know, this is this is just a, a team that's that's certainly been battle tested, but building consistency heading into the NCAA tournament is, is, is critical. Yes. What you do late in the season usually has a, an effect on the committee and their decisions. Daly dribbled right into trouble. Fourth turnover for the Eagles. Taylor with the ball, got off to a quick start. Nice pass to Cochran. And she was hit by Ivy. Nothing but net crew is here. Ivory Latta. Kelly Graham is looking a little chill over there. And Justin Walter is joining the crew. We'll be getting over to them at halftime. They will be here all weekend long. Kelly's going to fill in for you tomorrow when you leave me for LeBron. <laughs> Yes, she yeah, is. I think that's a good trade for you. I, I Lato <laughs> over there dancing it out, I see. Co Cochran back at the free throw line. Boy, she has been so steady yes. for this program. And she's going to come back next year, use that final year of eligibility, and she's going to stay all five years at Louisville. Yeah, I think that's great. You know, first of all, your point of staying all five years in the same <laughs> that's... institution, but, you know, the opportunity to continue to grow her game. And she's had more responsibility every year she's been at Louisville, and she's continued to, to step up to the challenge, has really been the rock for this team. Four straight points now for Louisville, all of them for line from Cochran. BC's offense has gotten a little wonky lately. Jojo Lacey left it short, but my goodness, Dontavia Wagner 
She's getting rebounds, but not following through. Now Lacey, a little bit out of control, finally. Probably Lacey gets it from Ivy, pardon me. And she settles things down. DC's gone over two minutes without a point. Ivy throws up the three. Nikki Jefferson got it over to Curry, who's getting most of the minutes at point. Coming off the bench for the cards. Great call from Jeff Walls. Time running down on the shot clock. Jefferson getting it out, Taylor for three, and Jefferson on the ground. Mobile foul on the ground, keeping they call the foul on her before the shot. That was missed anyway. sure what happened right there it was it almost looked like Lacey and Wagner ran into each other yeah. and Lacey fell down yeah Lacey might have sold that pretty yeah. well got the foul call on Jefferson Lacey spins into a double team and then the tough fadeaway Wagner chased down another rebound but then turned it over so the shot clock is off, 26 seconds to shoot. Louisville has missed its last four shots from the floor, but has kept BC from scoring now in over three minutes. Sidney Taylor. Loaded out there by Lacey. Wagner almost got another one. She's sneaky fast. She is, she, and she's got great instincts. You know, those are the things that you can't teach. Seven point four seconds left to shoot. A little confusion now for Louisville. Russell inbounds. Jada Curry into the lane. Charge. Guess who? Dante Via Wagner. Was it number 24 mm -hmm. again? And she's the first one down the other end of the floor. Has 11 turnovers now for the cards. Boston College had a little bit of time. Dante Via Wagner doing her part certainly on the defensive end, but Louisville takes a four. She said she missed a couple of those looks being sped up. She said she has to find other ways to free other people up, setting back screens, moving without the ball, how she impacts the game even without the ball. Well, she's right. They shot 27% in that second quarter, and this is a team in Boston College that's got to be able to find ways to score the basketball if they want to be successful. Wagner forces another turnover. BC needs to take advantage of turnovers. 26 points off turnovers in their win over Clemson yesterday is Sidbury draws the foul. So, so far in this game, just six points off of Louisville's turnovers. Ooh, and wow, as wow, Angel wow. mentioned, what, what they counted seven Miss Lambs, Coach Mack did, and that's a problem. It, it is a problem, and, and in their three-game win streak, they've been successful because they've made shots. You know, it's a team that struggles at times to, to, to make shots, and you know, there were long scoring droughts. They forced 11 turnovers, but they haven't been able to capitalize on those turnovers. Kiki Jefferson's foul sends Sidbury to the line. She had nine points in the first half. Coming off her third double-double of the season. 20 points and 10 rebounds yesterday. And the upset went over Clemson. And it's a two-point ball game. 
Jeff Walls told us before the half, told Angel Gray that he wants to cut down on self-inflicted wounds, bad passes. Louisville misses that first three. Virgil Lacey only had two points in the first half for the Eagles. There's Wagner. Sets the screen. Now Cochran is on Lacey. Trying to get it back into Wagner. And Ricards was there to pick it off. But Lacey stuck her hands in there. Wow. Right. Initially called BC basketball, but the officials get together and change the call. Rod Creech, Meadow Overstreet, and Safe Esho, our officials this afternoon. Rod Creech uh, from Indiana, yes? He lived in Indiana for a while. He told me he moved to Houston now. Oh. So. He, Mishawaka, Indiana for a long there time. There you go, right, out the, mm -hmm. right next door to South Bend. Right next door to South Bend, yes. We will have Notre Dame against the winner of this game tomorrow. That's a nice move for Ricard who struggle at times in the first half, especially the turnovers. Curry played most of the minutes at point in the first half. But Ricard still starts this half as she started the game. Todd only took one shot in the second quarter. Missed that one. And outside of transition against Benson yesterday, the other area that I felt like Boston College was good is Nyla Harris goes to work inside, was, was sharing the basketball. You know, they had a high assist to make field goal ratio. Today, everything is, is a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. You gotta give credit to Louisville defense. Jeff Walls challenged his team to be better defenders. They're really making life difficult in the half court for well, the Eagles. Yeah, BC, 22 assists on 32 made field goals in yesterday's win against Clemson. The best I've seen their offense this year. Jeff Balls with this defense making things a little bit more difficult. And if you're going to go one on one, you got to find which matchups you want to attack. Nala Harris is an outstanding individual defender. Absolutely out. Just a sophomore from Orlando. Made a big leap forward in her progress from last year. And this is what Nina Ricards can do. She can get downhill. She hasn't been as aggressive offensively in this ball game. And Nyla Harris is just so good, using her body, strong, powerful finish, physicality on the inside. Last foul was on Olivia Conklin, her first for Louisville. Gives Wagner a little bit of room. Lacey. No! The rebound knocks out of her hands. Jefferson begs to differ. But it is Boston College basketball, 20 seconds to shoot. Attack of the rim by Sidbury, second chance, got it. Sidbury. Sidbury now with 13 points, the only eagle, actually the only player for either team in double figures. with the miss, and they're gonna get Lacey for going over the back of Nyla Harris. For more on sit there, let's go over to Angel Gray. <laughs> Ladies, not only is she a political science major and pre-med, she also finds opportunities to care for elephants. While she was in the portal before coming to BC, she went on an elephant excursion in Thailand, told Coach Burnaby McNamee, McNamee that she just wanted an opportunity to get out of the country and volunteer responsibly. She gave them mud baths, made connections with some of the locals, but her heart and passion for everything is so infectious. Coach Mack used the quote, how you do anything is how you'll do everything. That's why she's the best fit with this group. That's a lot did, going on. Did she say pre-med and political science? Uh, yes, and, oh uh, and elephants. In oh Thailand. my goodness. That's impressive. Sidbury got her shot blocked that time by Cochran. Sidbury spent her freshman year at Utah, transferred over to Boston College, which is a challenging academic school. So obviously, she's a young lady who likes yes. challenges. Absolutely. Won a Pac-12 championship last year at Utah. Went to the Sweet 16, so has experienced success as well, and brings that kind of mentality to BC. Taylor with the score. Gets the lead back up to six. Todd, who got off to a 
quick start today and is pulled off. Lacey missing the three-pointer. Austin College only 11 points in the third quarter and four so far here. Taylor guarded by Todd. Knocked out of bounds, stays with Louisville, who will have just over four seconds to shoot. And there goes the incredible student athlete, Sid Perry, to take a rest over there with Coach Mack. Also entering the Louisville, number 13, Marissa Russell. Marissa Russell back in, Cochran takes a seat. The stand below in as well for Louisville. Caught from behind by Wagner. They need to get a shot off. Curry recognized it and banked it in. Todd on the other end with the finish. But Jada Curry, great recognition. Yelled for the basketball knowing the shot clock was about to die and she put it in. Off the bank, no less. Underneath Harris, like, oh, we just got yeah. her hand in there so quick. Just such quick hands. But how about this play by Jada Curry? Knows the shot clock is winding down, calling for the ball. Throws it up off the glass, Pam! Well, her last name is Curry. <laughs> After all, I'll tell you, Sidbury, 13 points for the Eagles, and Sidney Taylor, nice little pull up. Seven points to go along with two assists for the Cardinals. Cardinals with the lead in this game. Winner gets Notre Dame tomorrow. This is the first of four games we have for you today on the ACC Network. Our next game in the afternoon session will be North Carolina and Miami, an 8-9 matchup. Those are always toss-ups. Carolina, a little bit of a downturn towards the end of the season. Boston College broke their 10-game losing streak by beating Carolina, but then they go and beat Duke on the closing day of the regular season. And Carolina's dealt with injuries throughout the entire season. Yeah. Really a depleted roster trying to find a way to, to, to limp into this, this ACC tournament. And, and Miami, a team that is always so dangerous because of the way that they defend and can get out in transition. And Katie Meyer's team's always going to come with Katie Meyer-like intensity and grit. That's coming up after this game. Lacey shoots with a shot clock winding down, caught iron. Daly couldn't get the follow. A couple of offensive boards on this trip, however, for the Eagles. Sidberry, nice turn, good luck. Caught foul, but couldn't finish with the lay-in. Russell picks up her second foul. And said, sends Sidberry to the line. She is four for four today. Sidberry in high school, in addition, you heard Angel Gray's report about her being such a great academic person. And she was at Utah, that's what she did. No one in the history of Utah high school his high school basketball has more points than she does. She also played softball and ran track in high school. Multitasking. Multitasking. Multi-sport athletes, yes. love it. Yes. And that's sort of becoming antiquated. Taylor. This is the three. Nice three hunt down. Side. Wow, by Marissa Russell. That's that, that's a Jeff Walls kind of play, and he's cheering oh, over yeah. there and pointing to Russell for that hustle. Russell hustle. I see, yes. You know, Marissa Russell is one of those players who has played a role her entire career at Louisville, excels in that role. Great hustle play right there. You know, there are certain players who, whose minutes fluctuate, but, but they're essential to being the glue of a team. Marissa Russell is one of those players. Getting some nice minutes in this game. Senior out of Ottawa, capital city of Canada. There she is. 
And a lot of Canadians playing in the next ball game as well. Yes, Miami, like a third of their roster. Getting out of the cold, going down to Coral Gables. Good move. It'd be all right, wouldn't it? Yeah. And playing for Katie. Shot clock issue here. Russell missed everything. So the ball goes over to the so Eagles. Boston right, yeah. College really struggling from the floor in the last couple of quarters. Shooting less than 30% from the field, but still in this, just down six. Well, that's the thing. It's Louisville's not lighting it up either. Right. right? And, but BC hasn't been able to take advantage. When they've turned Louisville over, they haven't been able to score it. Sid Berry there continues to go to work. And right now, she's the one. She's yes. the source of offense. Continue to give her touches. Let her go to work. Let her create. She's got 16 points. Kayla you know, Ivy yesterday had 12 assists. So far, just two for BC, simply because they're not making shots. And Louisville missing opportunities to get the ball to the high post on the high post flashes because you can do that. You can run the high low, you can get it to the short corner, run the low to high, but no, in that short corner, the trap is coming. Russell looks up at the shot clock. Sidbury got her hand in there to mess it up. Four on two. Sidbury got it blocked. BC basketball. Octavia Wagner, after a brief rest, comes back in. Let's go over to Angel Gray. Ladies, just to revisit what Coach Walls told us before the game, he said, careless turnovers, we cannot have them. If there was a turnover, you can bet on a substitution coming, Taylor coming in for Russell, and I'm sure that's going to be a conversation of how important every possession is in March. Well, they're getting really lucky because Boston College is not able to convert off of these turnovers. So some of them dead ball, some of them BC just, just not able to capitalize. But Jeff Balls also talked about wanting his players to be on balance and to play off of two feet, particularly in transition. Well, that went in and out, but Wagner, the rebounding machine, gets the putback. Her sixth offensive rebound of the ball game, Pam. She didn't convert him in the first half. She's going to have to do more of that here in the second. She also has five steals, which is one off her career high of six, which she has done three times. And her career has a ton of five steal games as well on her resume. Travel. Yep, seven all run. It's going to continue. I mean, watch Octavia Wagner. She's in the middle of the ACC. She goes unchecked, but she's always in constant motion. You know, great offensive rebounders. Number one, they have a great instinct for the basketball, a great nose for the ball. Number two, they track the shot. Tracking the shot, understanding where it's going to come off, knowing your shooters, that's a skill. And having that motor, right? Just to, she never stops moving. Blend that with her athleticism, that's pretty scary. Good defense over there. Now, Sidbury, careless pass, but it's rescued by Ivy. Shot clock winding down now inside. Sidbury, that's a nice dish from Daly. And we have our eighth tie of the game. Best ball movement of the ball game for Boston College, that possession. In three and a half minutes plus since Louisville has scored, and Wagner looked like she forced another turnover, but there's a foul. And there wasn't a clean catch from Daly on her three-point shot, so she attacked the closeout. This is that individual defense on the perimeter that Jeff Walls was talking about. If we have to rotate, we're giving up high percentage looks. Excellent offensive execution. Wagner just picked up her second foul, attempting to get another steal. We are all tied up. Contact, it's a charge. Drawn by Tiana Todd. Tiana got off to a great start with seven points in the first quarter. And she got two fouls in that second quarter and sat a majority of it and couldn't quite get going. Great job that time of establishing herself and taking the contact. Second foul on Sydney Taylor, who heads over to the bench. Guarded out there by Curry. Wagner hit by Russell, who thought she had a clean steal. And Louisville playing this tandem 2-3 zone. There's a miscommunication on the wing. 
Fumble foul number 13. Melissa Wilson. Mentioned it, Dontavia Wagner gets to the free throw line over five times a ball game, but only shoots it at 60%. You know, you don't have the luxury if you're a BC of taking, of not taking advantage of opportunities at the foul line and opportunities at the rim. Three fouls on Russell. Wagner hits that free throw in Boston College. Back on top. Got both. So 10 nothing run. Now 11 nothing after that last free throw. Meanwhile, four turnovers with no points in, a, in four minutes plus now for Louisville. They have three turn or six turnovers, pardon me, in this third quarter alone. Shot clock again in the single digits. Cochran back to Jefferson. Tried an extra pass into Russell. It went out of bounds. 1.2 seconds left on the shot clock. Jeff Rawls calls a timeout and wants to draw something up. He's trying to break this drought that is almost five minutes without a point. Oh. Jeff Rawls, known for drawing up some good plays. Let's see what he has when we come back. When you're great, your game does the talking. In the ACC, our speaks volumes. 26 appearances in the Final Four, including nine different schools, five teams in the last five NCAA Final Fours, 40 teams in the NCAA Tournament in the last five years, most of any conference. A nation best eight ACC teams competed in the 2023 NCAA Tournament. It's not bragging if it's true. Greatness is what we do. The ACC run, they have a two-point lead. 1.2 seconds left on the shot clock. Jeff Walls called the timeout to try to draw something up. Steph, they've gone almost five minutes without a point. Yeah, they, this is a team in, in Louisville that, that struggled in the second quarter as well, scoring the basketball. Boston College wasn't able to match it, but Jeff Walls, one of the best in terms of his after timeout strategy, execution. So look for a misdirection. I think Olivia Cochran's going to get it right here. The cards inbounds. Cochran flashes to the other side of the lane. See if they're able to knock it down, and that took a second off the clock, the uh, shot clock. Entry for BC, number two, Kayla Ivy. Lacey goes out for Ivy. He got point two now, so it's got to be a tip. Yep. They put another tenth of a second on the shot clock, point two. They should not have had time to catch and shoot with point two. Nope. The Coach back over there waving it off. Louisville Boston had 20 Boston. points in the first quarter. Since then, they only have 22 in the second and third quarters combined. And they had four three-point field goals in that first quarter and only two so I mean, this is a team in Louisville that doesn't shoot the three all that often. They average just under five a ball game. But it was better ball movement in that first quarter. Multiple players getting touches, forcing the defense to shift. Getting a little stagnant right now. And conversely, the Eagles doing a better job of moving the ball and getting looks. They need a shot probably from Todd. Nope, extra pass. Wagner couldn't handle it cleanly. Here comes Jefferson, a chance for Louisville to end their drought, but BC doing BC-like things. Ivy hit it out of bounds. The self-inflicted wounds Jeff Walls talked to Angel about going into halftime. Turnovers, careless with the basketball, not communicate on the def defensive end of the floor. All things that you can control. Two seconds flat left in the quarter. Ricards again with the inbound. Having a very difficult time getting it in. Cochran has to throw up a prayer. Louisville turned the ball over seven times in the third quarter. Advantage at the foul line in the third quarter as well. Only Ann O'Doy has more steals in the history of BC women's basketball. She was an All-American in her senior season in 1988. And Wagner 
attacks the basket, couldn't get it to go. Those six steals, as you mentioned, tied a career high. It's the fourth time that she has had six steals in a game. And Louisville in a major offensive slump right now. But still, the good news is they're only down two. Winner gets Notre Dame tomorrow morning. Cards breaks the drought with the shot clock about to expire. Ties the game up. BC can't answer, knocked out of bounds, and actually a foul has been called as we go over to Angel Gray. Ladies, going into the fourth quarter, Louisville was down two. He was talking to his team. Jeff Walls mentioned in the huddle, I'm trying to fire you guys up. I have to make sure that you're completing everything. He said, setting up cuts. We're not committing. He said, that has been a testament in our season. When we hit adversity, we just stop. And a player said, well, we're not stopping now. And you can see a different type of sense of urgency coming from this group trying to finish at the rim. When Jeff Walls talked to us pregame just uh, about this group, he said, I expect us to come out with a lot of energy. It's can we sustain it? Can we sustain it? What does it look like in the third quarter? And they did. They hit a low right there. It's about mentality and, and handling mental ad adversity. And what's the mental makeup of your team? And he knows because he's had some really tough, yeah. from a mentality standpoint, ball clubs. They're overachieved because of that. Very messy. Sid Berry gets it. And he also knows how to push buttons by saying to him and they're not doing something. Questioning their character, their hustle at times, trying to get a response. Jefferson hands it off to Curry. Shot clock at five. Jefferson tried to get it inside to Cochran. Wagner initially got a hand on it, but then a foul has been called, I believe, on Sidbury. It is. That's the second on Taya. That's a great effort by Olivia Cochran to try to stay in the play and, and create the foul. Olivia Cochran and, and, and Nyla Harris, when, when she's in the ball game, touches, you know, I think is important for Louisville, but how they do it is is tough when you play against a team that just swarms and scraps and claws on the defensive end of the floor. Cochran back at the line. It's her first point of the second half. Her first miss after hitting her first five three throws, but Russell Russell gets the big board. And remember the last matchup between these two teams came down to a shot by Nemo Cards to win it. The Cards just hit that one. That game was in Chestnut Hill. And BC led for most of the game. Sidbury finishes with her left hand. Yes, she hit 20 points for the second straight game. Had 20 in the upset win against Clemson yesterday. McCarts has been quiet, but she's been picking it up in this second half. She's got six. Louisville up one with the ball. Sidbury went for the steal and then recovered. Daly tried to knock it away from behind and instead got called for her second foul. BC leads the ACC in steals this year, averaging 12 per game during the regular season. Wagner individually was second in steals only two. Tana Hidalgo, who is averaging about five steals per game, just under right now at 4.9. Great inbounds to Cochran from the cards. Olivia Cochran looks like somebody who's ready to take over this ball game right now. Gets him back to a three-point advantage. Sidbury missed everything. 
I mean, she just does a great job of stealing for a position. There's nobody on the weak side. And gets a finish, but the way she was running down the floor, the intensity that you could see in her eyes. I mean, she looks like a player right now that's ready to take it over. Right? Went over a thousand points in her career earlier this season. She also looks a little winded, She's bending over a lot. Played a lot of minutes in this game. Curry for three. Off the back rim, Cochran, of course, running to try to get the rebound, and she was fouled by Wagner. That is the third on Dontavia. And that was pursuit of the basketball. Olivia Cochran started on the weak side in the short corner and just pursued that offensive rebound. Third foul on for Boston College, pardon me, in this quarter. Once you hit five, it will put Louisville in the bonus. Ivy going for the steal that time. Card strides in. Wagner grabbed for the ball. And that's her fourth foul. Yeah, that's a tough one now. She reaches across the body and got the arm initially. She ended up coming up with the ball at the end. But that's where if you're Dontavia Wagner, it, it's tough because your instinct is naturally to go get it. But you got to understand with three fouls, your team needs you in the ball game in the fourth quarter. So two quick fouls on Wagner. She sits down with four personal fouls. Cochran gets a well-deserved rest. Inbounds, Harris. Another whistle. Andrea Daly now has three fouls. And that is the fifth team foul, so with 6.17 left to go in the quarter. Louisville in the bonus for the rest of the game. Here's Nala Harris. Sophomore from Orlando. Worked hard on the game to bring her offense up. Her defense has always been stout. And both. So now a five point advantage. We see being outscored by seven so far in this fourth quarter. No Wagner out there. Ivy picked up her dribble. Terrific cut to the bucket by Lacey. We see now some of those looks when they can get one four high and look for the backdoor cut opportunities. Louisville's really pressuring in the passing lanes. Third assist for Ivy, who had 12 yesterday. She's tied her career high. Inside, Harris. Second chance, no. Third chance, no. Ricards puts it up. And Russell with another offensive rebound. So since Jeff Walsh challenged his team in the huddle, in the timeout, they have come out with much more energy. Couldn't capitalize, but great effort. Austin College hanging on to the basketball. John Madry making the play for us over here at the table. John's got good hands. Yeah. Gave it right to BC. Daly gets it in. Five minutes to go in the fourth. Todd has been rather quiet after getting off to another great start. Sid Berry found the lane and hit it. And it's been Sid Berry on the offensive end, especially in this second half. 22 points now. And Louisville just threw it away. 19th turnover for the Cardinals. 
Timeout on the floor. One point ball game in Greensboro. Ally ACC Women's Basketball Tournament is brought to you by Ally. Whatever you're saving for, we're all better. Winner this game gets Notre Dame tomorrow. North Carolina Miami winner gets Virginia Tech. Two more games coming your way tonight. We saw Virginia Tech practicing out here earlier. And still no word on Liz Kitley. She did not participate, however, in practice. Georgia Amor was out there being Georgia Amor. So that's the big question of this tournament. And the NCAA tournament is Liz Kittler, who's such a fantastic player. That's a good inbounds for Daly. And BC bounces back on top. Louisville has missed six straight shots, trying to avoid the upset. They swept BC during the regular season, but only one by two in the second game in Chestnut Hill when BC had their full complement of players. Good trap over there. And a timeout taken by Jeff Walls. With six seconds left on the shot clock, we will take a 30-second timeout and then head right on back to Greensboro. This spring is the perfect time to get away with a great deal on your favorite Hyundai model. All backed by America's best warranty, plus three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. Add more joy to your journey at the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Get in and get away now before these deals are gone. Lease the Tucson for $2.59 a month or get 0% APR or up to 1500 bonus cash. Hurry, offers end soon. On the back, Louisville's going to have six seconds to get a shot off. Jeff Wall's rather animated in that last level. Well, certainly discussing getting the back door caught on the defensive end of the floor, but offensively, you know a trap is coming to the corner, so if you're going to give it to someone in the corner, you got to be ready to get it right back. But you really want to avoid that area if you're Louisville. McCards gets it into Jefferson, who fumbled it. Got to hurry. Jefferson had it blocked by Daly, and a foul has been called by a trail official with a half second left on the shot clock. Well, JoJo Lacey certainly beat on the play. I couldn't tell if she got her on the wrist as she came through that follow through or not, but now that's one of those those plays and, and discipline on the defensive end because you don't even need to make it look like you're going to foul, right? That's a hard angle to make a shot. Kiki Jefferson makes that. You just got to live with it. Make players make tough twos. Jefferson, one out of two, tenth tie of this ball game. Louisville going to bring this full court pressure, look to find some traps. Russell coming back in. There it is, yep. Get out of that court, yes. And Coach Mack recognized it as well and called the timeout. I, I, I will never understand as a, as a basketball player why you dribble right into the corner and just, just allow yourself the opportunity to be trapped. You know time and score situations, you know tendencies of opponents, but more than anything, you know the trap zones. Stay out of the trap zones. And Coach Mack, you mentioned it, understood it, recognized it, and called a timeout right away. Yeah, the sideline is basically like another defender. The sideline's another defender. And once you cross half court, that's another defender. So you've got four defenders right around you every time you dribble right to the corner. Yeah, both teams certainly having trouble scoring in this game. Very close game at 52 apiece. And Boston College trying to come up with something. They've really gotten great efforts from, boy, Taya Sidbury has had a terrific ACC tournament. Octavia Wagner's been on the bench with four personal fouls, and they're obviously hanging in here, yeah. tied up at 52. But I boy, that's that's a big puzzle piece to miss. And I know you're, you're trying to milk as much time as you can without Dontavia Wagner on the floor, but you can sense Louisville a little bit more aggressive offensively as well. Todd hits the three! We saw that play yesterday, right, against the zone. The on-ball screen that brings the overload. Todd runs the baseline. And she knocked down a big shot. She's been quiet in the second half. 
Deanna Todd with the three. Under three and a half to go. Ricards tries to answer. Swing for the ball. Here come the Eagles. Kayla Ivey, the redshirt junior. Two in a row. Oh, Lacey with the miss, but a great rebound by Daly. This is this terrific offensive execution. The extra pass brings the middle of the zone out. Tiana Todd knocks it down. And Coach Mack, Joanna Burnaby McAbee. McNamee told us she was and has been shortening her rotation. It was not a good look at the bench, but they're obviously engaged in this game. Daly actually turned the ball over. And that's close season. If that's what happens. The rotation shortens. Minutes are hard to come by. Backer left it short. Here's Lacey going to wait for Ivy, her point guard. Mac really loves Ivy's composure. It's pin down. Off the foot of Sidbury, but it's rescued. Shot clock now at five. And a contact. Ivy puts it up. Got a piece of the rim. But the rebound by Kiki Jefferson. Look at the hustle by Andrea Daly. That's this Boston College team. They just don't stop. They keep coming at you. It might not always be pretty. They might, they might struggle at times, but they never stop competing. And this is a team that has been hit hard by the transfer portal of players exiting the last couple of years. Knocked out by Ivy. 23 seconds to shoot for the cards. I mean, multiple levels of effort, you know. This is a team that's fighting and clawing. They've been through a lot of life stuff throughout the course of the last couple of years. They understand, they stay together, they stay true to the process. And they're giving the Louisville Cardinals a battle. Giving them all they can handle, and she's back in the game. Dontavia Wagner, who has been sitting with four personal fouls. Number 24 in dark gray. She has six steals today. Russell, too much on the shot. Lacey, two on two. Decided to challenge Cochran, who grabbed the ball, and it goes over to Louisville. That's decision time and score. So the last couple of possessions for Boston College, a turnover, a jump ball. There were not numbers. Time is on your side. There's no advantage right here in transition, and you're ahead. So you need to, to get it back out, milk the clock, execute on the offensive end, and that was a terrific defensive play by Olivia Cochran. Louisville down by two, minute and a half to go. Curry, three, too strong, but Ivy could not corral the rebound. You see up by three in this game. Notre Dame awaits the winner tomorrow. Louisville, no field goals in their last 10 attempts. Make that 11, but that's a foul. Cochran let out kind of a primal scream, frustrated that she was unable to get the basket, but she has gone to the line a lot today. Oh my, that's the fifth on Wagner. So Dontavia Wagner, the most important player defensively, certainly for the Eagles, has fouled out. 12 points, a career high time, six steals. Cochran with a couple of free throws. Got a box out if you're BC.
Missed them both. Bailey with the rebound, and then she got fouled. Olivia Cochran, who had hit five of her six free throws before that trip. 0 for 2. And that's the whole second team foul in this fourth quarter. So again, if they get into a situation where they need to foul, we're going to keep that in mind. But right now, they're going to come with this full court pressure. Your BC, you want to make sure you take care of the ball. Give yourself an opportunity. I love Nyla Harris on the top of this press. Sid Berry got it stolen. Harris converts. The press worked. And a timeout taken by Coach Mack and BC as the lead has been sliced to just one. Louisville had missed 10 straight shots, then the foul on Cochran, who couldn't hit the free throws. And the long pass. I mean, the, the long pass against the against the pressure is, is not going to happen. You know, you know the 1-2-2. Two, two. We're going to watch in this area right over here. Watch Sydney Taylor. The ball comes. The trap comes. Freeze it right here. This area is open. There needs to be a cutter. Somebody needs to cut to the middle of the floor, suck in another defender, or you get the ball and you go the other way. Long passes in trap situations are meant to bait you, bait you into turnovers, and that was terrific defensive execution by the Louisville Cardinals. There you take a look at the reset. Still two fouls to give for Louisville. After the timeout, BC tries to handle this pressure. And Boston College can run the baseline. Can do that after a made shot by your opponent. Might have to use another one if they can't get it across. Ivy does with a couple of seconds to spare. Now you want to now you want to use the clock. You want to execute. <laughs> Pardon me. It looked like the cards might have been trying to foul. And Jeff Walls is telling his team not to foul. I mean, time and score. You're down one. You don't need to foul. That allows the clock to reset to the 20 seconds. Sydney Taylor just got her fourth, and you might have been able to read Jeff Walls' lips. He said, one stop. And after that foul, yes, we looked over, and he was saying, what are you doing? He did not want that foul. And you want good execution and get yourself a, a good opportunity here. If you'll be seeing, there's Olivia Cochran wow. again. All over the ball. Louisville down one. Ricard. Ooh. Taylor oh, might have shifted her feet a little bit. Ricard with the drive. And picked up by Nyla Harris, who sends it home to give Louisville the lead. There's a different mentality when it comes to winning time and understanding what it takes to win. Louisville's been there, BC's not, and they're trying to learn in these moments. And then again, Olivia Cochran, this is two huge defensive plays that she's made to give her team possessions. And Ricard's great job of attacking the rim, forcing a rotation, and that frees up Nyla Harris for the offensive rebound. She's been terrific on the glass. Harris now with nine rebounds over the last three minutes. Boston College has not scored, and during that time, they've turned the ball over five times. But they have an opportunity still to take the lead. You got an opportunity. You can advance the basketball, so you're not going full court against this pressure. You want to put pressure on the Louisville defense to defend, and, and you want to certainly attack. But at the same time, like number one, getting the ball in bounds, making sure you understand, you know, time and score, how many timeouts you have. But number two, you've got to, you can't be tunnel vision when you do attack. If you force the rotation, you've got to be able to make the right read. And if you're at Boston College, you're thinking Todd or Sidberry, right? Todd or Sidberry, you've got, and you can put those two in action together. Sid Berry with 22 points. Deanna Todd has a couple of threes. She hit five of them yesterday, which was a new career high. And she's been so good at going to the rim, but look who's checking her right now. Olivia Cochran. Still have a foul to give, does Louisville. 
2.8 second difference between the clocks. They got it inbound. Sidbury wore the high dribble. And Lacey tries She's to settle. It's a mismatch. It's not on the perimeter. And Sidbury. Getting it over there's Todd, and who else? Olivia Cochran takes the basketball away again. And now Boston College down by 12, down with 12 and a half seconds left to go, and a foul was committed by JoJo Lacey. BC foul number four, JoJo Lacey, her third. That puts Taylor on the line. Jeff Walls is hot. Sydney Taylor on the line from Louisville. That felt like Todd had an opportunity to just catch and shoot. Olivia Cochran might have gotten away with a, a, a little reach in right there, but certainly a heck of a play. Three straight big defensive plays by Olivia Cochran getting it done for her team. Sydney Taylor got the first one. Tomley, the grad transfer from the University of Massachusetts, knocks it down, but it's still a one possession game. There were 12 and a half seconds left to go. Yeah, and right now, that's the last time out for Boston College. So I'm looking for a quick three or going straight to the rim. And if you're Louisville, and if Jeff Walsh trusts his team, you have a foul to give. So instead of giving up a three, do you foul and send him to the free throw line? Certainly they can have an advantage when they're set, boxing out. And Jeff Walls is known to do those kinds of things, right? To foul at the end of But it also depends on if you can trust your team. And he has consistently talked about this team and their defensive energy and effort. So look to see what he decides to do in this moment. But if you're Boston College, you want to run an action and try to get Tiana Todd a quick three. If not, you've got to go to the rim and force the action. Six nothing run for Louisville in the last minute. It's been three and a half minutes since Boston College has scored. During that time now up to six turnovers. Kayla Ivey, the point guard, gets ready to inbound. Number 30 is Todd, a really good three-point shooter. Got the fade. Yep, Here's Todd, it. catches, shoots. Cochran with the rebound. She's fouled immediately. Hey, that was a good look. Yep, that's what they wanted, they right? A good look for Tiana Todd. You could see the fade was going to come. Ricards does a good job of chasing over the top and putting just enough pressure. And who else but Olivia Cochran, who has made every big play the last four possessions on the defensive end of the field. Now she can put it away at the free throw line. No timeouts for Boston College. Time on Louisville. Louisville takes one. Full timeouts. Holly Cochran, you're right. She has been the fuel behind this furious comeback. Steals that big rebound. And she's Jeff, missed three straight free throws, however. Yeah, and, and Jeff Walls is going to talk about this right now, right? You got an opportunity to to make this second one, but regardless, he's going to want a little bit of light pressure in the backcourt. He doesn't want Boston College to be able to take one or two dribbles, pass it up the floor. He's going to want a little bit of light pressure. No timeouts for the Eagles. And again, also could be a situation that Jeff Walls is talking about. You know, hey, we have a foul to give. If we feel like we're in any kind of situation, do we take that foul? We may, may want to take that foul and force Boston College to inbound the ball on the side. Cochran absolutely looks gassed. She's got to be physically and I would think mentally kind of spent this effort in this comeback. Well, when you see the impact you can make on a ball game without scoring the basketball, right? She hasn't scored it as much in this fourth quarter, has missed free throws, but has made winning plays on the defensive end of the floor for this the ball club. She only has three points in the second half. Crucial steals and rebounds. That last rebound off the Todd miss. 
Boston College with one heartbreaking loss to Louisville already this season, the last time they played in Chestnut Hill. Cochran sat down the entire time for that timeout, which might have been why Jeff Walls took it, so she could sit, take a breath, collect herself, and go back to the line. Missed it. She's now missed five straight free throws in this game. BC does not have a timeout. Curry does foul yeah. because they have that foul to give. Had the foul to give. And Louisville foul number 32. That's one of those Curry. close ones, though. You want to make sure you take it on the on the way down on the Recession dribble, not on the way up. I mean, right here is where she's, she's fouling her before the shot goes up. So they call it a little bit late. And you saw Avi saying to the official, I was shooting. Right, right. Smart play to throw your arm up in the air like that. And keep him in front, make him score it. Todd picks up her dribble. Ivy needs to heave it. And Curry might have gotten a hand on it. And what a comeback for the Louisville Cardinals. They scored the last six points of the game. And they hold Boston College. Boston College.